The microscope utilized to view alveoli in vivo is a dark field epiejective metallurgy microscope. A suction head was constructed to secure the lung surface to a cover slip with light vacuum. This allows us to film the same alveoli throughout tidal ventilation. The suction head can be moved in both the X and Y direction to scan the lung surface under the cover slip. The microscope image is filmed with a digital camera and recorded on a Super VHS system. The videotape is digitized and the digital image analyzed by computer image analysis for changes in alveolar size during tidal ventilation. Seen here are subpleural pulmonary alveoli in the living pig during standard mechanical ventilation. Alveoli appear as distinct sphere-shaped objects with extra alveolar blood vessels separating the individual alveoli. Alveoli are in sharp focus at expiration and go out of focus during inspiration. Capillaries can be seen traversing over the alveoli. Note that normal alveoli do not change size appreciably during tidal ventilation. Also note that capillary perfusion across alveoli stops at peak inspiration. This is visualization of classic West Zone 2 capillary perfusion. These are alveoli following acute lung injury by tween installation. Tween is known to deactivate pulmonary surfactant and is utilized as a model for the Adult Respiratory Distress Syndrome, or ARDS. In stark contrast to normal alveoli, alveoli in the acutely injured lung change size dramatically with tidal ventilation. We can see two distinct types of abnormal alveolar mechanics. In the upper center of the field, note an alveolus which totally collapses and expands with each tidal ventilation. Several other alveoli change size significantly during tidal ventilation, but do not totally collapse at end expiration. We have categorized alveoli which collapse totally at expiration as type 3, and those which change size significantly but do not totally collapse as type 2. In this scene, we are located near the edge of the lung lobe, which is the dark border at the right edge of the screen, such that alveoli have more area to expand. Note the large change in alveolar size with tidal volume and that these alveoli do not totally collapse and thus are classified as type 2 alveoli. This scene depicts normal alveoli as the lung is slowly inflated with a super syringe. This maneuver is used clinically to generate a whole lung pressure volume curve and as a recruitment maneuver to inflate alveoli. It is currently believed by many that in the injured lung that all alveoli recruit at a similar pressure, which is identified on the pressure volume curve as an inflection point or P-flex. We will demonstrate in subsequent footage that this is not true. The lung, seen here, was being slowly inflated in 20 milliliter increments by the super syringe during this entire narration. Please note that these normal alveoli did not change size appreciably throughout this recruitment maneuver. Here we will see the effect of a similar recruitment maneuver in the lung injured by tween lavage. All alveoli in this area of lung are totally collapsed so that no distinct alveoli can be seen. Note that as the lung is inflated, alveoli begin to pop open and recruit. Alveoli will continue to recruit throughout the inflation cycle. Once open, alveoli do not increase greatly in size. We see here a large alveolus recruiting in the upper left portion of the field. And again, another large alveolus recruiting in the upper right part of the field. The lung is now being slowly deflated and alveoli can be seen to systematically deflate throughout the deflation cycle. Note that alveoli did not all recruit at a single point which indicates the P-flex seen on the whole lung pressure volume curve is not the result of massive alveolar recruitment. In summary, with this in vivo microscopic technique, we can visualize and quantify alveolar mechanics in the living animal. This allows us to assess the impact of various ventilatory strategies, such as low tidal volume, PEEP, the open lung approach, or a recruitment maneuver at the alveolar level. 
We postulate that these data will allow us to choose the optimal ventilatory strategy which will decrease the morbidity and mortality associated with ventilator-induced lung injury. A schematic representation of a normal alveolar sac demonstrating the proposed mechanism of lung volume change at the alveolar level. Normal alveoli change volume very little during ventilation, whereas the alveolar duct expands and contracts with each breath. A schematic representation of an injured alveolar sac in which surfactant has been deactivated in one alveolus. Forces are no longer equal across the alveolar wall and the alveolus becomes unstable, collapsing and expanding with each breath. A great deal of shear stress would be placed on these unstable alveolar walls which may lead to ventilator-induced lung injury.